Palmer diced and pureed the lanes on Friday, setting a six-game BWBA record that included back-to-back -back 300s and 29 straight strikes. She has the top spot in Florida for today's BWBA St. Petersburg Clearwater Open Step Ladder Final. It happens now. And we welcome you to West Florida, the St. Petersburg Clearwater area, specifically Seminole, which survived a light dusting of rain from a tropical system. And we go inside Seminole Lanes, a great crowd on hand for this championship step ladder final. I'm Dave Lamont, joined by a Hall of Famer, Carolyn Doran Ballard. We take a look at our five finalists for today, our opening match. Brianna Cote back on television after last week, taking on Verity Crawley. They both got in at the last game. Jordan Richard was a solid third. Diana Zavialova, a solid second. And at the top, Brianna Clemmer dominated this building and just literally tore it apart brick by brick. And Carolyn, she joins us right now. Hi, Brianna. Great bowling all weekend. That 879 seemed to put you on pace to take over the lead for this tournament. You, you bowled confident not only on Friday, but Saturday. How are you feeling going into the title match? You know, I'm feeling awesome. Just let Bree do Bree. Take a deep breath. Take my time, like I always tell you, Carolyn, you know. But just got to be myself and let everything else fade away. What's the game plan while you wait? Obviously, throw as many shots as I can, but also pace myself. I don't want to overdo myself. Um, and just talk about a game plan and watch the lanes and go from there. All right. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you. Good luck today. We appreciate your time. By the way, that's the shirt she wore when she tore this place apart on <laughs> Friday. So that is a lucky jersey. <laughs> so be on the lookout, everybody, for that. Now let's get to our future for the sport lane pattern and find out what they're bowling on. The future of the sport oil pattern this week, the ladies bowled on a 37-foot pattern, about 25 milliliters of oil. It was a very high-scoring pattern. As you can see, this is where the majority of the girls tried to play to start, way out, tried to stay on top of that pattern, and also used urethane. As the lanes broke down, the ladies were able to move here to here, but had to still get that ball to the right to get it back to the pocket. Used balls that were very easy to control and manage the pocket. Obviously, you can see carry was not an issue. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number five seat from England, Verity Crawley. And in honor of the Jubilee, she is wearing the British flag for Bournemouth, England. And she wears the, the Union Jack with great pride. She's very excited, actually, about the weekend. I watched some of that Jubilee. It was very exciting. <laughs> All right, now I have not, I've been here for two days, Carolyn. I haven't seen that yet. Well, it's, I'm, I'm not laughing. It's just I just got done talking to Emil, and we talked about how many 710s were left during the week was really the hit once you went light. Very unusual, very unusual for Verity to leave an 810. That's more of a leaf for me, going no. rolling it and going up the back of it as much. But she is trying to stay up the back of it a little bit to control that pocket. And she made an interesting comment to the ball rep before she started. She said, when you see this ball starting to quit, tell me because I have a tendency to stay in the same ball too long. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number four seed from Tucson, Arizona, Brianna Cote. Back-to-back -back telecast for Brianna. She was in Egan, Minnesota, didn't have the result she was looking for when Shannon O'Keefe swept up the ladder to pick up uh, title number 15, a significant title in PWBA history. Brianna looking for the number three, reigning player of the year. And that's how they played it when they struck right there. Brianna. And 
we want to mention that any player who rolls a 300 game during today's telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find out local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all of the latest news and information about your favorite sport, and that, of course, is bowling. And we do have two bowlers on our show who had 300s. Brianna, of course, Clemmer, and Verity had a 300 game as well. With the shorter oil pattern, I do expect to see some strings out there. And the girl, I mean, all the ladies look very confident. They looked great in practice. So we may see a 300. You never know. And a different ball on the left-hand lane. And she mixers a strike there. So she's two for two. Left lane, she's using a ball that's a lot cleaner than the ball she's using on the right lane, getting it way further right, as you can see, getting it out to the three board. Nice, smooth motion back to the pocket, coming in light, blowing the rack. Great look this week doing that, coming in light and just blowing the rack to seven. And Berti also gets a similar reaction on the right-hand lane. This is what you saw as, as they were trying to move to the left just a little bit. When they get that ball out to the three, four board, the ball comes back just a little bit light. They increase their angle just a little bit, but that light shaker hit was the one that really was a good carry this week at the bowling center. And look, if you're gonna get stuck with an 810, get it out of the way. And she got stuck with an 810 on her opening shot on this lane. Almost looks like a replay. Verity is using the same ball on both lanes. She's using urethane. She wants to stay as far right as possible. Again, I mentioned she's getting her hand behind it, underneath it just a little bit more to control the pocket, rolls, and kind of when you say rolls and lays and just blows the pocket. So it's a fourth last week. Twin Cities Open, her last title, and the only title she won in 2021 was the ITRC Classic. Oh, that's dead flush. You can see the ball just erase the eight of the nine. Playing a little bit, playing a little bit deeper on this right lane. Gets that ball nicely into the swing, but look at the leverage right there. I love, I love the chin over the knee. Right there, she's loading up and gets through it. And I'm gonna tell you, that, you did not see that many years ago when she first started, but she went down to 14 pounds and sh that has allowed her to create so much more power at the end and get through it. And it's made such a difference seven years on Team USA, where she currently is, and also a former junior Team USA member. Look out there, and she got a break. She had the IQ Tour Emerald on that lane. Definitely did not get this ball to the right. As you could see, that had about the 8-9 board where she was getting it out to the 3. There is no buildup in the middle part of the lane. That's where we talked about with the oil pattern. As they moved to the left, you still had to get the ball to the right and down lane, creating a little angle until that buildup in the middle was created. For Cote, if we want to remind you, if you're looking for some great PWBA gear, visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. So Crawley off a double. Open frame in the first when she left the 810 on the left lane. Did not make the cut in Minnesota, surprisingly, after a good start. Well, that's not her best shot, Carolyn. I think Verity has become a player you now just expect to be good every week. And we were talking about that earlier. I, I expect to see her in the top 10 every week. Right here, she did not get that ball as far right. 
But with urethane, as you know, as that oil tends to change and lanes go through the transition, you're gonna have to make a move. And honestly, when you're using the urethane, what the ladies liked to do was they actually liked to move right and stay on top of it and either have to throw it harder, which allowed them still to control the pocket. She threw a mixture yesterday and told us that she really wasn't sure how she was going to start the show, and she had to see what practice looked like. Now, according to Matt McNeil, uh, the ball rep for Storm Products, he says the left lane, both ladies have the left lane hooking a little bit earlier. So that's that difference in, you know, the ball for um, Brianna. Right. The, the ball, one ball on the left lane, one ball on the right lane. But as you can see, ball change here for Verity. Just a hair high. I like that ball change too. She went into a solid hustle. And again, it's it's gonna be clean enough, but still read that middle part of the lane right here. Gets it back out to that three, four board. You can see it. Still has maybe just a little bit too much back end. I still like the getting underneath it just a little bit to tame down that back end until another transition. Well, tonight at 8 Eastern, join CBS Sports Network for the fastest growing sport taking America by storm. Of course, it's the 2022 Major League Pickleball Finals. 48 players, 12 teams competing. See who takes home big cash prizes in Dreamland. Uh, pickleball's huge where I live. Brianna Cote, 23 pin lead as we're getting to that middle part of this opening match. The winner to take on Jordan Richard. Gotta go. It did. I love that ball, and that's a step down from it from earlier, which is an RST2, which is a great, it, it gets clear, it's an ace asymmetrical ball so it's going to read that pattern and be very smooth on the back but continue with that cover and i love how she's playing the lanes we saw a couple of the ladies that are uh, on storm staff using this ball and it gave them a great look she opened with three in a row eight spare in the fourth so she hasn't missed on this lane yet well correct she did miss on this lane the eight spare was in the fourth Well, that was a much better shot than the last one on that lane. Great shot, but you can see definitely that angle down lane, perfect. So Brianna Cote with a 33-pin lead over Verity Crawley in our opening match. The winner will be taking on Jordan Richard, who will be standing by to talk to Carolyn and I when we return to Seminole, Florida, the PWBA St. Petersburg Clearwater Open. Our match here opening up, Verity Crawley trailing by 33. She began getting stuck with a shocking 8-10 split. And Brianna Cote has five strikes in six frames so far. Now, the winner of that match will take on number three seed Jordan Richard, who's there right now. And Jordan, what intel have you picked up from watching this match? Uh, looks like the left lane's getting a little tricky. Uh, I saw Verity switch out from urethane, so I'm going to be very mindful what they're doing. But I'm also going to do what's best for me. Okay, and Jordan, um, after a so-so year, in your words, you know, you weren't as thrilled with your bowling last year. How does it feel to be back on TV? Feels really good. I'm really excited. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you, Jordan. Good luck in your next match. Thank you so much for taking a minute. Thank you. And so Verity is up, down 33. And she hasn't bowled all that badly, but right now Brianna Cote with five strikes in six frames has earned her 33 pin lead. I like that, I'm surprised. Another great shot by Verity.
definitely playing the lanes the way you need to, getting it out to that 3-4 board, and she is still dead behind it. I think this ball is just a little bit too much on the back. It's reading the end of the pattern just a little bit too much. So a few things. A, remember we talked about ball speed. The ladies talked about using their ball speed to their advantage this week. She can throw it a little bit harder, or again, she may have to go to a ball that rolls even a little earlier and is even smoother. Time is starting to work against her. I personally like how she can amp it up. We talked about that, Dave, prior to the to the show. I mean, there are a couple girls on this TV show yes. today that can really throw it hard. Yeah, Jordan Richard would be one of them. Yes. We'll see her take on the winner of this match. Definitely cut through the face, leaving her the never friendly 3 6 10. Well, as we heard, the left lane is definitely starting to hook a little bit earlier. You can see they're already trying to make that move left. Does not get this ball as far right. That tracer is a great read. The closer it is to the tracer, you know you didn't get it as far right as you needed to. You know, it's interesting. Verity is a Weber International product, as is Diana Zavialova. We're in Florida, not all that far from the Weber campus. When we were in the Midwest, we had nothing but McHenry people all over the place. And now, suddenly, we swing south, and we have two Weber products on the program. I think every week, the odds are you're going to have a college somebody or yes. something somewhere. Yeah, it has got so good uh, on the women's and men's sides. You're absolutely right. Ooh, look at that snap hook right into success. Brianna has had a good couple of years on tour, but let's go back to her first PWBA title, the 2016 PWBA Lexington Open right there, a little south of Georgetown, Kentucky. And she threw eight strikes, defeating Kelly Kulik in the title match. And she had shorter there. hair. Yes. <laughs> I was on that call, though. I remember that uh, specifically because that was her first title. She picked up a second title last year in addition to her spot as PWBA Player of the Year. And I think she really likes that title. She's very proud of that. Has the same leave as Verity did on Verity's last shot, that 3-6-10. And that left lane is getting snappy. And you can hear her say push. She knew she got that one just a little bit left. Again, we're looking at that tracer, which I love. It's right there, eight, nine. They were getting it out to about three, four, and she got around that one just a little bit. This left lane is going to be, and this will be something we watch in the next matches. You know, will the seed, the top seed, make them finish on the left or the right? That may play into how you want someone to finish the match. Not the conventional way to make it, but just make it is all that matters. That's textbook style. Just making it from the just outside. Just making it from anywhere, yeah. <laughs> just, just, you know what, at this point, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. Best shot she's perhaps thrown in this match. And she desperately needs it. She's asking for a re-rack. Right here, this is a big shot for her going into the ninth frame. That's going to set her up to put some pressure on Brianna. But right here, you can see this is what we're looking for. That 3-4 board. Once they get it about right here, it's been going high on both lanes. Verity's max right now at 221. Brianna at 255 max. Standing by, we just heard from her a few minutes ago, Jordan Richard, 
who can spin it. Ooh, kick save and a beauty on that 10. That's kicking out that what you would call as a light 10, right? Or a, what you would think is a flat 10. She just kicks that baby right back. Again, right here, it's all about the angle. That ball comes in and just slaps that 10 back. That is great reaction. It's all about angle and ball speed. So the double cuts into Cote's lead. Brianna still in the driver's seat, but Verity pushing back now in this foundation frame. Big shot here for Cote. Whoa. Saw a few of those over the last couple of days, Carolyn. On the left lane, she got around it just a little bit, leaving the three, six, ten right here. Let's, we can, we hit about right there. As you know, when we got a little bit left, just snap through the pocket, four, nine, just a bad break, but definitely didn't get that one to the right. But both shots, I feel like she got around just a little bit. She covers one. You get a re -rack? And she's also asking for a re-rack on that left-hand lane, as Verity did. So 20 pins to fill here. And I think that's a, a great call because after 4-9, the last two shots, 3-6-10, 4-9, mm. I would take an extra second just to make sure of your game plan and what and what and how you want to execute. Well, that was the first time she did not strike on the right-hand lane in this match. Correct. So she has, you mentioned 3 six, ten in the last and the eighth. She also had an eight spare in the fourth when she went a little bit high. So we bring you the graphic. It is easier written than done. Good looking shot, just a little bit on the quitter 10, but she has to make this. Much better shot. Right there, we're still looking at this area. Keeps everybody right in the pocket. Comes in just a little bit flat. Believes herself a makeable. First things first. All right. A strike will shut Crawley out. And a re rack again. If she ends up with nine here, Verity can punch out to tie less than nine, and Verity can steal this one in the 10th frame with a strikeout. <laughs> you can hear that re-rack happening now. So she has struck on this left lane in this match, but not in her last two shots. Strike to win this game. Got it. Brianna Cote will move on. A little gutter flirtation here. But this is what you have to do on the shorter patterns. Watch this. Finally gets it way right. 
there we are again. Oops, I'm learning how to use this. <laughs> but coming in light, and that was one of the best hits this week, and that's what all the ladies have said. So, Brianna Cote finished fourth last week, is moving on uh, with that victory. And Verity Crawley will take fifth. This will be her best finish so far. But you know there's more to come. She's just way too talented, way too good. So she's had two six, the missed cut, and a fifth for Verity Crawley. But it's take on Jordan Richard and smash. Match number two coming up from the St. Petersburg Clearwater Open on the PWBA Tour. And you could argue this match turned on the first frame when you look back at it because Verity Crawley winds up with five straight strikes, loses by one pin to Brianna Cote. Well, success in the lanes is determined by many factors, including, of course, ball selection and knowing which balls are in your arsenal and what they do is a key, as PWBA champion Shannon O'Keefe tells us in this week's BCTV Tip of the Week. Hey guys, welcome to the BC TV Tip of the Week. I am Shannon O'Keefe, and this week I want to talk about helping you maybe understand your arsenal just a little bit better. There are symmetricals and there are asymmetrical bowling balls. And the number one thing is being able to identify what those are just by looking at them. So the first thing you're going to want to do is look at your ball. And if it has three markings on the ball, it's going to have a pin, a CG, and a mass bias. That means it has an asymmetrical core on the inside. Conversely, if you're looking at a different type of ball, this would be a symmetrical ball. It's only going to have a pin and a CG. This is a really quick way to identify what type of bowling ball and core you have in your bag immediately. The second important thing is making sure you're not spending your money and or space in your bag with the same bowling balls in there. There's been so many times that I've seen people's bowling ball arsenals and they will have two or three of the same type of bowling ball, whether that's a big symmetrical ball or a big asymmetrical ball. The best and most simplest way to build a well-rounded arsenal is you want to start with a big asymmetrical bowling ball and then a bigger symmetrical bowling ball. And then you're gonna go into a clean asym and then a clean symmetrical. Now I know that's only four bowling balls, but it really is gonna depend on the bowler from there what extra ball you wanna to add to your bag. For me, I'm always gonna lean more into the medium to stronger symmetrical bowling balls. I really hope this tip helps. Good luck out there and we'll see you guys soon. And Shannon with another solid week, finishing in sixth this week. There you see Jordan Richard, also a solid week. She's third, and she'll take on Brianna Cote next for the right to face Diana Zabialova in the PWBA St. Petersburg Clearwater Open. The bowling world, and women's bowling in particular, lost one of its biggest supporters when USBC and PWBA Hall of Famer Joan Romeo passed away this past week. She diligently worked to secure sponsorships and promote events throughout the years, and her fundraising efforts helped create an exhibit to recognize professional women's bowling in the International Bowling Museum and Hall of Fame, part of the International Bowling Campus in Arlington, Texas. The mother of professional bowlers Tori and Robin Romeo, Joan was recently inducted into the PWBA Hall, making her and Robin the second mother-daughter combo inducted into both the USBC and PWBA Halls, along with Doris and Cindy Coburn. We send our best to all those grieving this loss. Carolyn, a, a giant figure really in the history of women's professional bowling. Unbelievable woman, unbelievable family. She took us all in. That's my little Joni there. And uh, don't want to get choked up here, but uh, she took us all in. Like I said, we'd show up on her doorstep when we bowled in <laughs> California, and it was family. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number three seed from Maumee, Ohio, Jordan Richard. <laughs> And as the higher seed, Jordan gets to decide who gets to go first, and she says, I'm going first. Which allows her to finish on the right lane, which, if you were to ask the ladies, probably is the better lane. Come on, the, nope, not going to go. 
Well, what did Brianna Cote say during the break about that left lane? Let's see what it says. <laughs> I think that lane's getting tighter, and I definitely am just chucking it to the right because I'm definitely not moving in, <laughs> which, which is true. It, it really is. I mean, you, you do want to stay near where that pattern is telling you to play. Jordan also, though, using a ball that's going to read the middle and be smoother off the end of the pattern. And again, I do think this left lane is a lane. So Brianna Cote, who needed a fill in 20 in the 10th, got it. Because Verity Crawley was starting to find her proper form near the end. So Brianna was fortunate there to hold her off. And you're starting to see what's going to be necessary to win here. She made that comment. She's doing the same thing on both lanes. You can see she has got all the area she needs to the right, especially on this right lane. And I like this ball on this lane. As you can see, she gets that one out almost to the two board. We talked about blowing the seven off the deck. Brianna averaged 225.38. Started the tournament in 10th, and after 18 games was in 11th, but after the 24 games, she ended up in the number four position, came on strong in the final block. Well, there's that troublesome left lane, and she masters it there with a mixer. But right here, what did she say? I'm going to chuck it to the right. And whether she increases her ball speed, she is continuing this angle, and as you can see, as soon as we hit that tracer, it's almost right to the end of the tracer. When she gets it out here, it comes in just light. I think that's the best reaction. She needs to continue to use that part of the lane and either ball up or ball down, depending on what she feels she needs to see. Well, that's a familiar sound. And Jordan Richard has stuck with one ball, the Rubicon, and she is still throwing it. I love the Rubicon again, even rolling ball. I love her game. You talk about natural talent. That right there, she doesn't blow her elbow forward like a Daria Pyok, but man, she naturally has her hand behind that ball and just rolls it off the palm and pop. I mean, and creates ball speed naturally with no pull down. Now, not her best there, and she noted the universal sign of disappointment is when a bowler stands straight up at the foul line. Off her hand, she was way left of target. You could see this ball right here, almost right over the tracer, way left of where she's playing the lanes and where Brianna's playing the lanes, and you could see 3-6-10. Jordan seeking her third professional title. It'll be her first since 2019 when she won in Lincoln. Former PWBA Rookie of the Year in 2018. Felt last year with a new company, even though it was their second year with a new equipment company, that it was still a learning curve a year ago. But uh, it seems like she's got that down now. like the perfect angle, but a bit of a ringer on that 10 pin. Yeah. Brianna is definitely looking comfortable on both lanes right here. She even got that one in a little bit. So again, we see, you know, lane transitions every time the ball goes down the lane. And let me tell you, if you give her just a little bit of hold and a little bit of bump to the right, she's deadly. Team. 
You can follow the BWBA on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and BowlTV.com to keep up with the greatest women bowlers in the world. Get the latest video, highlights, news each week to follow your favorite to head north to New York State. Long Island is next up. After a Midwest run and a trip down to West Florida. That, again, it looked like a good shot, but a quiet 10 pin there. The key is the tracer, right? She's playing a little bit further right on this lane than Jordan, but look at this. Gets it in just a little bit, and it gets past the tracer right here. You can see that ball got down the lane just a little bit further, just like it did in the 10th frame that first game. Comes in just a little late, half pocket, but leaves again a makeable, which I'm gonna wait till she shoots it before I say what I'm gonna say. She's been solid on those. And it, like we spoke about Shannon O'Keefe last week with her win, clean. These ladies are extremely good spare shooters. So for everybody watching, especially our younger bowlers, I know it's cool to strike. <laughs> but I'm telling you that right here you're seeing that spares keep you in the game and put you in the lead. And keep you in the lead. And we saw it. That she had a clean game where Vera G. Crawley had the one bad break early and it ended up costing her. And that uh, two pin will stay up. She didn't like that shot off her hand. You could see it almost double dribbled. She looked, she got a little bit ahead of herself. You could see she used a little bit of her upper body, shot it way right. It just was a bad shot. Again, though, she leaves the two pin. No trouble with that. I mentioned this is to be if she's able to catch it, her third title. Let's go back to her first one, 2018, the PWBA Greater Harrisburg Open. That was in her Rookie of the Year season. She made five championship round finals and cashed in every event she entered, which is really something. Because you're always dealing with changing conditions, travel, time zones, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And to do it in a rookie year is really something. Of course, you'll find her on Team USA. Go, go. She asked, but it did not deliver. Much better shot. Again, she's playing a little bit deeper, obviously a lot deeper than Brianna. Right here, she's getting into about that eight, nine area. So again, Brianna's trying to get it way out, still that two, three before the tracer. Jordan, you see her playing a little bit deeper. And contrary to what you just said. I did. Let's make that a mental note here to see what this does for the rest of the match and how much this is gonna weigh on Jordan Richards' score. Very unlike Jordan. And when she started to see a little bit of that over under where she was going high or flat 10 and couldn't create the angle, she opted to move right and get on top of the pattern until she got comfortable again. So it'll be interesting to see if she makes that, choo uh, you know, that change. You know, she said in our talk yesterday that she is very good at staying on top of yes. the pattern. She mentioned that specifically to me and tried to do it there. So Cote now with a chance to expand. Oh, I like that. That is taking your gift and running away with it. And again, Brianna's playing the lanes the way she likes to play them. She said her game plan is not to continue to move left too soon. She wants to be able to stay as far right as possible. And again, either with her ball speed or her hand, create that as the lane transition, create that little bit of hold and bump to the right. And that's what she's doing right here. I will tell you, you know what I, as they get into the 10th frame, if Brianna is is ahead on the fill shot, 
I would throw that ball that you throw in the right lane on the left lane. Okay. She may do that. And this has been her left lane ball consistently. And wide change. <laughs> I didn't think she had to until, now. <laughs> until you have the luxury of doing so. Right. So the winner of this match will take on Diana Zavialova, who will be standing by in a moment to talk with Carolyn and I. Brianna Cote with a double has taken a good lead in this match halfway through the PWBA Tour. So Brianna Cote has the advantage here over Jordan Richard by 31 pins as Jordan gets ready to go up in the sixth. And Carolyn and I are joined by our defending champion. It was 2018, but some good memories in this building for Diana Zaviala. Hi, Diana. You obviously like this building. What will be your key to success tonight? My key is going to be to stay patient and do what I did all week long. Okay. That's it. That's nice and simple. It's very simple. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> I like it. Thank we you. appreciate it as always, and good luck in the next match. Thank you. Diana was in a spirited battle for a while with uh, Brianna Clemmer. They were going back and forth until Brianna just finally grabbed the uh, the apple in the last game and uh, bowled beautifully in the final game to secure that number one position. But it was a good battle between those two. She went all the way to the right and able to mix it up and stay alive. Much better shot on this right lane. And you know what? I, I want to make a, a, a just an observation on this. People who are watching, don't forget, you just sat through a commercial break. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And she's on an open. And she gets up and makes this shot. That's what you need to do is clear your mind and refocus on what is the priority at hand. And that right there is making the adjustment and making sure you make the best shot you can. A lot of bowlers will tell you the first shot out of a break is the hardest. Well, she knew right away that wasn't the angle to take, and she's got a big problem. This left lane, she made that comment in the interview that the left lane looked to be getting a little tricky, which it is but definitely not getting it far enough right, trying to play just a little bit, not trying to play deeper, but she keeps missing just a little left on that left lane and paid the price. And she missed the six pin. So she takes an eight in that seventh frame, and all of a sudden, without having thrown a ball, Brianna Cote's lead has expanded to 45 pins. Again, she didn't make this step ladder until the last game of qualifying. She and Veritique Brawley. Also, Carrie Smith was contending in there. Carrie had a strong tournament. It was wide open for that final game. Ooh, snap hook perfection. I, I'm telling you, from game one, Brianna chose to play the lanes a certain way and had a game plan. And again, we've talked about it. She has not really veered off the beaten path. She just keeps trying to get it further right, not really getting around it. Again, those two shots on the left lane, right? Great reaction. Ball is reading right before that tracer. And she's got great pin carry on the light hit and the high flush. Across the face, there's a little extra work back there besides that 3-6-10. You see the 9-pin as well. You can see she definitely got around that one. You could see even by her hand, you could see more of her palm, not palm up, but the top of her hand right here. You could see hits about 8-9, closer to that tracer. So that's more shot than equipment, right? Yep, that's just a bad shot. Look at how she got around that. You could see by her hand. Her hand, when she's behind it and then rolls through it, is more... Um, I'm trying to explain it. So almost like the Pete Weber, like on the side, right? Okay, you, you know, this way. That one, yes. she almost, you could see the top of her hand go up, and that's when you knew you got her, she got around it. 
This one's not a lot of fun, but boy, you cannot do it any better than that. That's not possible. And she stays clean. <laughs> and she knows, but you know, you can get away with it when you're up by 51. It's okay. And I'm going to have to find a better way to explain that because I saw it, but I have to figure it out well, now on how to explain I, that. I, but you showed it to me anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll put back you, here. Maybe she put you on camera and have you do that with your hand. It made sense to me. And a trip seven. Might be too little too late, unfortunately, for Jordan. Well, Tuesday night at 8 Eastern, CBS Sports Network brings you back-to-back -back WNBA tip-offs as the Liberty host the Minnesota Lynx, followed by a must-see battle of the guards as rookie Ryan Howard and the Dream take on the all-star bet Sue Bird and the Seattle Storm. That's 8 and 10 Eastern time on Tuesday. That is her third two pin of this game. And I like the angle on that shot. I like the way she threw it. I think right there, if she had another game or, you know, she was winning this match, I would make a one and one to the right or a two and one and see what she, what, what kind of reaction she would have. Well, she moved from 35th place to 11th to 6th to 3rd. Uh, so it took some work for her to get to this show especially starting out in 35th after the first six games. But that's the cruelty of TV. It's one and done here. And it's a fast 10 frames. Yep. Um, when you're watching it, it doesn't seem so fast. When you're bowling it, it's a very fast 10 frames. And you have to remember this. This is a new tournament. Everything that happened yep. the last two days doesn't count. Yeah, we are in a part of the house that was not used yesterday. It was used on Friday, but not used yesterday. And Brianna Cote is using the lanes very effectively. She's 2-0 and oh so far. We'll take on Diana Zevialova and brings out some extra equipment. Where did I hear that was a good idea? Coming up, match number three. Brianna Cote has advanced. Brianna Cote advances, 222 first game, 224 second game, and that consistency clean through has gotten her into match number three in the PWBA St. Petersburg Clearwater Open against Diana Zavialova. Take a look at the other finishers, too. He mentioned Shannon O'Keefe had that number four spot until the last game. Missy Parkin has bowled very well so far on tour. She is so due to win. Carrie Smith won the regional league in Egan, Minnesota. Ended up making the top ten here. Sandra Gungora, Danielle McEwen. You can always count on Danielle to have a strong event. Clara Guerrero in the top 12. And Aaron McCarthy finishing in that number 12 position. So standing by, Anna Zavialova getting in some last practice shots before she takes on. Brianna Cote and lingering in the background in the green, the number one seed, Brianna Clemmer. So we have two matches remaining. As you see, Brianna Cote in a narrow victory over Marantine Crawley, but Cote had locked up the match before Crawley struck out. But in this one, Brianna Cote is steady as she goes. Jordan Richard had a hard time finding a look that was successful for her earlier. And so now Cote moves on to take on the defending champion in this event. Diana Zabialovo, whom we heard from a few moments ago. Now, we say defending champion. There is a little bit of a caveat. The last time the PWBA visited here was 2018. There have been three champions. Rocio Restrepo, Shannon O'Keefe, and Diana. But Diana told us how much she loves this building, and she showed it. She was never worse than third place at the end of every round. She was third, second, 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 and at times yesterday was first. And... As great as Brianna Clemmer was, Diana stayed in her orbit until the very end. So Diana's had a good look all week, but this isn't all week. This is Sunday afternoon on the west coast of Florida by the Gulf of Mexico. And Brianna Cote has had the look so far. Now, Carolyn, as, as you predicted, she did switch to another ball right at the end when she had wrapped things up. She didn't use that ball this time. Actually, she threw one ball in the 10th frame, which you may not have seen. She did not get this ball to the right. Again, goes through the nose, especially on this left lane. And then she made the spare. And then she threw the ball that 
I was hoping she would try to throw, and it came in light, gave her a pretty good look, but again, she's the bowler, so she's opted to stay with this ball because she's made it work. But if she tends to do this again, I bet you you will see her switch. But only on that left leg. Yes. Because it's so often the case with bowling, it is a, it's just like two separate tournaments going on, it, a left lane, right lane event. It is, and honestly, the, the thing we don't, the thing that we don't talk enough about is they bowl on Friday. That's one tournament. Saturday, that's another tournament. It's a new day. New day, the lanes are different, your body's different, and today is a third tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number two seed from Latvia, Diana Zabyalova. From Riga and Latvia, four-time titleist. Two USBC Queens Championships in Nevada and Baton Rouge. And her last victory on the PWBA Tour, 2018, right here. That's another thing we saw a lot of. Now Diana is using the solid version of the, the ball that Brianna is using on the right lane. Playing a little bit deeper, definitely gets it to the right, but again, rolls just a little bit earlier, comes in light, leaves a 7-10. Did that shot lack a little energy? Yeah, it, 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 it just, yeah, it definitely did not have enough energy down the lane. Like I said, it rolls a little bit sooner. So, it, you know, basically it ran out of gas. You know what I mean? Rolls a little sooner, so you're not going to have as much on the back end, right? Common theme. So, as in the first match, Verity Crawley got stuck with an 8-10 and lost by one pin. Diana Zavialova, if you're going to have a horrible thing happen to you, have it happen early. So we'll see how she recovers. Certainly plenty of experience. A great recovery. Now, if you notice the difference between those two shots, she got that ball out onto the lane just a little bit more. Ball conserved energy. Went through the pins. Right here, see the loft? Just a little bit out onto the lane. Still the same area, right? Everybody is still getting it to the same area. We're in the third match. And takes out that eight pin. Working on the athletic tape on her wrist. Got a finger injury and a weird thing. Dropped a ball on a finger a couple of tournaments ago and had to fight through that. Harry. Oh, powerful strike. One of her best shots of the day right there. And this right lane is a great judge of what Brianna's doing. Again, I keep talking about it. We use that tracer as our guide. She can get it to the right of the tracer on that lane. And on this one, let's look here. Well, it went through the went through the pins. I needed just a few more feet before. <laughs> but she definitely got it, I would say, about that eight board, which is a little bit further left than she's been where she's been getting it to. And now she has a little bit of hold. Oh, by the way, let's look at that ball change on the left lane. Well, well, well. She didn't wait around this time. Nope. That was a wise decision. Score one for Carolyn. I'm telling you, that ball on the right lane gives her such a great motion. Once she started to have to really fit it on that left lane, Time to change balls. She's throwing it good. She's lined up. Now you just got to get the ball to get through the pins, and that's it. But she has to be so full of confidence, especially after making a decision like that. Because we know those decisions occasionally backfire, but not in this case. She must, uh, I can't imagine the confidence she has right now. Diana made a little adjustment there, but couldn't get the four pin. All she did was simply loft the ball onto the lane just a little bit more so that that ball conserves a little energy. You can see it. Why am I? I I'm slurring my words That's here, for okay. God's sake. Right here, you can see her get it out onto the lane right there, just like she did on the left lane. Gets it to the same spot, 
finishes just a little bit harder, but that's what's going to happen. When you get that ball out onto the lane, have that little bit of loft, your ball will conserve energy to give you just a little bit more pop on the back end. I think it's interesting. I think that Brianna's done a great job of because she's been clean the whole day, she's forcing you to, to not make mistakes. She's, she's actually forcing you to out-bowl her. Yeah. And I like to use that. Del and I talk about that all the time. We're watching the shows. I go, she's being out bold. Yeah. I mean, that happens. And she right now is telling her opponents, I have a good look. I'm throwing it good. I'm making the right adjustments. You're going to have to out bowl me. See uh, Daria Payoke, who's a good friend of Diana's, hanging out to watch to root on her pal. And some Weber folks are here as well. He mentioned that uh, Diana was a superstar in college. My goodness. Look out. Diana got around that one. You can see by their hand. I love watching these girls. I keep calling girls ladies bowl, but she missed way left the target, got around that one. Bad shot, she'll make the spare, and she will regroup. And for the second straight week, you were seeing the advantage of being in that first match. Shannon O'Keefe, had the time, had the experience, had the, saw these lanes transition in real time. It's not that easy to be one, two, or even three. I think it's very hard to be tournament leader. I, you know, you always go back and forth. Hey, do you want to be second? Do you want to be third? Yeah, it's great to have a game under your belt. You know what the lanes are doing. And I think you do have an advantage from the tournament leader. But again, if you are tournament leader, you only finish second at your worst. Well, coming up next, we want you to get ready for more action on the lanes at the uh, BVL Classic is Sunday at 5 on CBS Sports Network, the U.S. Women's Open. On June 21st, a, a prestigious event and, of course, another major championship to conclude the season on August 9th at 7 Eastern. There will also be some events on Bowl TV that I'll be looking forward to being part of, including Wednesday. And Brianna Cote, this is her show right now. She has her foot on the gas pedal. She is sticking to her game plan. Again, she has moved very little, more on that left lane, not really on the right lane. Still keeping the, that great ball motion, not trying to overhook it. She's allowing the ball to do all the work. This is starting to look like last week, only when Brianna, of course, on last week's show, finished fourth. That snapped a little harshly, but she is fortunate to get just the four pin there. But again, if you're going to make a mistake and miss just a little bit left, leave a four pin, very obviously makeable. But again, the left lane now, this is frame it, number five. She's only struck once on this lane. And I was going to say, that shot did not look that bad. She may want to make just a little bit of a move on this lane. Not a big move, because right. you heard her earlier earlier on. I'm not going to move too deep. OK. And we mentioned Bolt TV. They deliver live, multi-channel coverage of the PWBA Tour, PBA 50. Team USA and USBC Collegiate and Youth Events and a lot more great bowling content. Visit BowlTV.com and subscribe today. Bowling lives here. Uh, the events that uh, for the ladies who that are not on CBS Sports that will be on Bowl TV. So and all of the preliminary, all of the lead up to these finals available on Bowl TV. Ball change here. Flush. To the same ball that Brian is throwing. So again, that's the step, right? That is a, a, a cleaner ball off that RST1. A little bit cleaner, still reads the middle part of the lane, but right here, same area, same break point as Brianna, just getting there a little differently. Perfect. Well, and in my notes, talking with Diana, that was one of the two balls she mentioned that she used extensively mm -hmm. to get to the number two position.
but she does come into this building with a lot of confidence and a lot of good feels. But she's run into a very tough opponent. That a double for Zabialova. And a little resistance in the middle of the match. Zabialova, has she found something that was missing early? And can she make a run? And Brianna Cote, who has absolutely been in charge, we are halfway through with the winner to take on the number one seed, Brianna Clemmer, for the title. So Diana Zabialova has come through with a double. Remember, go back to that opening shot. She left the 7-10. Is that going to be a factor in this match at the end? Uh, Brianna Cote with a 22-pin lead, but she's getting a little pushback now from her opponent in this penultimate match with Brianna Clemmer awaiting the winner. On the friendlier right lane, where her strike percentage is a lot higher than on the left, but that would go for anybody today. Dramatic left turn, much like many Florida drivers at the last second. Oh, not like New Jersey, make a right to make a left. Right here, she's playing the same part of the lane. Look at how far right she got that one out to three, and the ball just sets up into the pocket. She has been rock solid from game one. You see the max scores. This has been so far about where she has taken these matches by the throat and held on to them in the middle when her opponents have faltered a bit. Now Diana showing some signs of not faltering, so this is going to be interesting. That crossing over and not a great shot, obviously, leaving a 6-10 behind. Again, the left lane. Well, you really almost have to throw it on the right lane to make it work. That was just way left off her hand. And as you can see, she got around that one just a little more. Look where she's at, almost over the tracer, way left of out here. And you can see it goes Brooklyn. She leaves herself the 6-10. She switches balls to a plastic ball to shoot her spares. Well, she's put on a clinic comes to cleaning up. Well, coming up next, get ready for more action as the 2022 PBA Tour Finals continue with a semifinal round from Arlington, Washington. Do not miss the top performers competing for a chance at the title match right here on CBS Sports Network. That unique format they have up there. It's going to be very interesting. Let's see what Diana does on this shot. First off, first bowler in all the matches to finally change to a pearl ball against Brianna. And a mix of strike and three in a row for Zabialova. She's going to be a little bit just a little bit left of Brianna, but she is, again, playing the same break point. This is a great lesson at home. Depending on how you throw the ball, you can play the same break point, right? It's just how you get there. And I love the ball change. I think it was the right thing to do. You need a ball that's a little bit cleaner, still reads the middle part of the lane, and gives you that light hit. That was the one that gave Brianna the go-ahead in that first match, light hits. Messenger's going to drop in the gutter. The other one's just not going to have the strength. Watch this right there. That's the one two board. But again, here's the tracer, correct? Oops. Sorry. I just, nope. My fault, JT. I was a little late on that one. But that tracer, once it gets past that tracer, before it starts to get a hit pin, it's too long. Got to get it to read right between that tracer. I love those tracers down lane. It's a great
great for telestrating, that's for sure. Uh oh. Well, her second open, the first one understandable as it was the 7-10, but that one, there is, that hurts. Just a little loss of concentration. That's very unlike Diane. I watch her bowl all the time at home. She is a great spare shooter. She's always practicing her spares. It's just, just a bad break. Well, Brianna Cote has taken advantage of everybody's mistakes so far today. If you've made one, she has pounced on it. And she does it again. She has taken advantage of everyone's mistake or bad break during the game, like you said, Dave, but again, I mean, there's nothing else you can say. She just has this right lane down. I mean, she is almost 80, I think 80%. 80 four I believe. better than that now. At, She's four uh, for four. Four for four in this, in this game. Yep. Um, unbelievable. And and I am going to say this. I did say that the Diana was, was a bad break. Missing the spare is really not a bad break. Yeah. It probably is a little bit of a mental error. Um, and she will regroup from that. But in, in retrospect to that, you have Brianna, who has been focused and rock solid on every shot. She's made no mental mistakes. Had a couple shots that weren't great, but she's made every spare. She takes a re-rack. That's been a popular thing on the left lane. Both uh, bowlers last game took one, Jordan Richard and Cote took one. Brianna's gonna take another one here. The win probability heavily in her favor. Max score is 249. And she's also gotten away with a couple on that left lane, too. She has not been hit, except for the, what, the 4-9, right? She had that? Correct, but that 4-9 was on the right lane. That's right. I believe it was on the right lane. Yep. So it's been either 3-6-10 or the 6-10. I believe. But again, that ball, way left of target. But remember what she did in the 10th frame. She said she was going to increase her ball speed and get it to the right. And right now, that's probably something she can do on this left lane without having to make the big move. Increase your ball speed. Get them feet moving. Go and throw it a little bit harder on that left lane. Well, Cecil points out, uh, our scorekeeper, that yes, that was on the right lane, the 4-9. It's the only open she's had. And she did have a 3-6. 9-10 on that left lane Correct. in the prior match. But by that point, she was in control, mm -hmm. and the 4-9 did not hurt her. Quick glance over at uh, her ball reps who were off, standing clustered off to her right, right in front of us, actually. And for, and for all the players, I don't like really getting around it. I like more of up the back of it or rolling it off your hand. Just And if you need to get it to go through the pins, kind of like what Diane did, pitch it out onto the lane just a little bit. Well, Tavialova can get to, what, 214 is her max. And the max for Cote now after that is spare is 229. Great shot, gets this one right out onto the lane. That was picture perfect. Great comeback shot after that mental error. And another left lane re-rack. Brianna Klemmer, who qualified first, who beat Zavialova in the final game. Uh, they crossed together, and uh, they happened to be bowling against each other in the final game yesterday. And Klemmer, who better? She's been better, <laughs> especially on what she did on Friday, which we'll talk more about when she steps to the main stage. Right now, she's warming up. So Bialova needs another one. And gets it, a late tapper on the 10. Much better shot by Diana. Loved the little bit of loft out onto the lane, but again, same break point. Just great shot after that 10 pin. 
Well, what I really like about her is she's fighting back after a mistake. She didn't just fold it. And she's not giving in. You definitely don't make TV by being a quitter. <laughs> you don't win two queens by being a quitter either. And Diana, who told me that should she win the event, she would dedicate this to her grandmother, whom she lost a couple of years ago, and whom she misses terribly. that's going to have the juice to get that four pin out. It doesn't. No, but you could see when she let that go, her little facial expression there. Got it just a little bit left. I'm telling you, angle was so important. Right here, watch. Throws it good, gets it out on the lane. But right here, once you hit that eight, nine area, it just comes up a little bit high. Well, you knew she wasn't going to miss that one. So Diana finishes at 2.03. And a re-rack just for something different on the right lane. How much of that, Carolyn, is psychological, giving yourself almost a timeout, or how much of that you look down and you see something is askew? I think it's more of a timeout. I, I, the TV pair especially, um, you know, the, the bowling centers make sure that it's in pristine mm -hmm. condition for this TV show. So I'm not saying that a pen can't be off spot. Please right. don't, I you know, I'm not, don't say, oh my God, they're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's more about just taking that extra second uh, to regroup and make sure you can focus. Needs eight, has nine. So Brianna Cote has one more step to complete the step ladder. She will move on, take on the number one seed, Brianna Clemmer. So it's Brianna and Brianna. Let's see if you and I can go through a clean game <laughs> between the two of us. Okay. <laughs> so it is Brianna Cote. Brianna Clemmer in our championship match to decide the fourth winner of this PWBA St. Petersburg Clearwater Open. It really wasn't difficult to pick out our Bowl TV highlight of the week. It was the, it seemed like 8,790 series that Brianna Clemmer threw, but it was actually 879. That's a record, it included back-to-back -back 300s. 29 straight strikes. Her sixth game was 1,595. And it finally hit her there, and she finds her grandparents. It's uh, Mamma and Poppy right there, who are also here today. Uh, unbelievable bowling by, I mean, literally record-setting bowling by Clemmer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number one seed from Clover, South Carolina, Brianna Clemmer. And I know Carolyn has not left my side this afternoon, <laughs> but she apparently can communicate telepathically with these athletes, and we'll explain that in a moment. Go. Well, if that's a no, I want to see what a yes looks like. But no, explain what my remark there. Okay, de definitely playing the same part of the lane as Brianna first. Okay. But I said at the end of last match, oh, here, we're just going to show it. Look at that. Wow. Same thing. But again, here's the end of the trace. Oh, sorry, JT. End of the tracer. It went a little long. So what I said was at the end of that last match, I go, if I were Brianna Clemmer, I would make Brianna end on the left lane. And that's so what's going to happen. So I would start happen. the match. Yep. Higher seat. Uh oh What is it about first frames today? Well, I also said that you're going to have to out-bowl Brianna. And by missing spares, you are not going to out-bowl her. That's just nerves. That's just nerves. 
This is the fourth match of the day mm -hmm. for Brianna Cote. Mm -hmm. In three of them, mm -hmm. her opponents have had mistakes in the open. Now, bad and either split. bad breaks, mm -hmm. splits, or in this case, just an error. Split and, well, splits, and then Diana did have a split and the miss spare. Correct. The first frame. Now, meantime, Brianna Cote said two strikes and a nine spare. Three out of four of her first frames, she started with a strike. And I'm telling you, she's got this right wing down. She is focused. She has not moved much on this right lane at all, except for the fact of maybe just one or two boards where she now can get that ball to that eight, nine and have a little bit of hold or get it out to the one, two, and it comes back and blows the rack. It's the left lane. And I'm going to see if she makes a move on this lane or just increases her ball speed. Well, the strike percentage, that strike we just saw, makes her 14 out of 17 on the right. She is 7 of 17 on the left. Ooh, and again, look out. Boy, that has happened to her a lot today, but she somehow escaped disaster. See here, this is way left of target. As you can see, ball just jumps through the nose, doesn't go quite Brooklyn. So she's going to have to make a move or decide what she wants to do on this left lane because she will be ending on that left lane. Correct. And of course, Clemmer had the, that choice, being it, the number one seed, and she took the path that you would have taken if you were in that number one position. Right, because there's there's the reason right there is it's the lane that has been giving her the most trouble. Even though she's gotten through these matches, that left lane has been tough for everyone. And she goes right over to a conference with her ball reps. That is the Brianna Clemmer that we saw the last couple of days. And she's going to play the lanes, I think, the closest to Brianna. We can do the, we see this left arm here, but look at where she, everything is just in line. I mean, I can't get in front of her face, but this is all in line. I love it. And I'm going to tell you why she has her left arm out. She had problems with pulling down and just her swing getting really like muscle. And Brian O'Keefe had her put her left arm out to help her just feel a little more relaxed, believe it or not, in the right. Mm -hmm. And it kept her so in line and so she felt more loose and she just kept doing it. Well, it has worked. And one thing that Brianna doesn't have that everybody else in the show has is a PWBA title. Young player, so there's certainly plenty of time and obviously talent. So is it her time today? Well, she's going to run into a lot of resistance from this woman right here. I got to think, if you're Bianca Cote, what's that expression? The harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. I, she's been on I the agree. air long, as long as we have today. So she started with the first match, and she is not going to give this out very easily. No, and this right lane has just played to her strength. And she has had to make very minor adjustments on the right lane. I was just going to say, I think she needs the ball down. I think she needs to go with something a little bit cleaner. That ball is picking up too much in the middle part of the lane. She's going to go back to the Emerald, the one she was using in game one. You mean that one? That one. Okay. Got the five pin left. Got down there. And you can hear, she said, got down there. But that's what she's looking for right here. Not a terrible shot. Got it where she needed to be. She's been playing it. So that three board comes in just a little bit like 
went past that tracer. I would just make a simple move, maybe one and one right, do the same thing, because you're now playing an opponent who's on a double. And an opponent who was top average, 237.4. No trouble at all for Cote. Clemmer, this is even funnier. Mentioned Jordan Richard made a big move from 32nd place. You know who was right behind her at the end of the first six games? Clemmer was 33rd. Yeah. Went from 33rd to first and stayed there. <laughs> Janet O'Keefe wound up in sixth position, so she stayed steady as you would think she would. Come on. Yes! The other thing about the last couple of days, you can close your eyes and hear her bowl. When she was really getting hot, she's hit three in a row, and it's the first time I think somebody other than Brianna Cote has had a lead today. And you can see she's using a ball that's a little bit cleaner, and she is getting around it just a little bit, but she has great ball speed. And remember, we talked about that yep. earlier. It's going to be key to maybe not getting around and using your ball speed. She's able to get around it a little bit because she's got such good ball speed. It's not reading too early. Oh, man. We have seen this before. And I know you said it doesn't carry over from the other couple of days, but that's exactly how she pulled the last couple of days. Absolutely right here. Wow, look at this. Gets it right there, actually into about eight. And look at that, just sets it up to the pocket because I think that ball speed is going to be her key. And remember, she's going to end on the good lane. The more fun lane. A little more fun lane. It always amazes me how many tournaments I either watch or participate in in this seat. And there's always this huge difference between the lanes. They're right next to each other. Bucket got broken up, leaving her the two, four, five. Looks like she missed this one just a little bit and got that one way out. Look at this, but again, we have used this all day, right? Mm -hmm. Once it got past that tracer out to one, two, it just did not get back to the pocket. And that's on her favored lane, too. The right lane has been her pal. She's been striking on it like mad. It's a rare miss for her. And Brianna just zoning out right now. Everybody. Oh, no. And that, other than a 4-9, which is an understandable mistake, and by that point it didn't matter, this is her first serious mistake in the gut and the heart, I should say, of a match. It is the championship match. We have... Brianna, who's on a four-bagger. So she's now rolled her slightly reversed. She's putting some pressure now yep. on Brianna. So this is where that mental focus, and honestly, I would have maybe taken a re-rack here. Well, we've seen Just a lot of them. Yeah, yep. that's a great point. Just we've seen a lot of them, mm -hmm. especially when you're facing the more difficult left lane. Or you could just blast them into the pit. Much better shot. So Brianna Clemmer with four in a row. After a surprising mistake, Brianna Cote trying to make a stand and run the ladder. But right now it's Brianna ahead of Brianna. No, it's Brianna ahead of Brianna. We'll figure it out. And the man in the sport jacket right there is Corey Krause, who's the general manager of Seminole Lanes. And we want to thank Kevin. Kraus also the proprietor, and Caitlin Kraus, that's Corey's wife, uh, has been a wonderful host here in St. Pete, Clearwater area, or actually in Seminole, Florida. Not that far from the uh, golf side, though. And that's his granddad right there on his left shoulder. Meantime, not wasting any time at all is clever, and why would you when you're just slaughtering these pins? Five in a row. You know, it's so funny. We talked to her yesterday, and she said, you know, last year she felt like she got burnt out. And in her words, she said this, she felt like she got lazy. And 
this year she vowed that was going to change. So about three months ago, she said she buckled down to her harder work. She worked with a few people. You mentioned Brian O'Keefe, uh, Kim Kearney, uh, Chuck Gardner Jr., Matthew Wilburn, all these people that have helped her. And, of course, she's oh taken it in a run with it. Yes! And six in a row for Brianna Clemmer. She feels like she's in a great place, both mentally and she thinks right now physically she's the best she's thrown in in a while, and the evidence is piling up that she's right. I think that that McKendry, both physical game and mental game, they work hand in hand. Um, I don't know who does more of what, but I would say Brian has always been more, because Shannon obviously bold, more of that physical game type guru where Shannon has re really helped these ladies with the mental process of how to become a champion. Now I mentioned McKendry, Brianna was a darn good college bowler herself, but right now all of the breaks that were going her way and the good shots were going her way have gone away. And she's in big trouble here. I mean, Brianna is the first one to really put some pressure on Brianna, and it it is. You have, what do we have, four frames left, or yeah. one, two, three, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, again, fast 10 frames for the championship. Look out. Oh, hoo -hoo. She had chopped one earlier today. Come on, hit. And here's our Cisco Spare of the Week. Again, not textbook, but as long as they both go down, that's all that matters. So, Cote now trying to find the magic, but she's, no one's found much magic on the left lane. Uh, well, I guess Clemmer certainly has. for the seven to get rid of it. Pretty much well a must strike situation to put any type of pressure on um, Brianna Clemmer. There was five bowlers when we started. Only one of them didn't have a PWB title and it's her. That was through the nose. That might be her poorest shot so far, but she got away with it. And she said that when she let it go, she said, oh, gosh. She got a little bit late there. You can watch in her backswing right here. Oh, we're a little further past, but in her backswing, she kind of, it's one of those where it didn't get up and drop. It kind of went up, continued, got a little bit muscled on that shot, got around it and missed left. I wonder about her emotions right now. She's so close to that first title. I mean, big lead. Her opponent's struggling a little bit. It's starting to hit her, I think. I could be wrong. But that's a good way to calm the nerves a little bit. She does have the two people who raised her. Or she calls them Mamma and Poppy. Just a heater down the middle. There's, I mean, baseball term, that would just be a pipe 97 mile an hour fastball. Playing the lanes very much like Brianna. Same break point. Again, using her ball speed to her advantage where she can get that ball cl clean through the front, get it to the right, and there she, you can see that reaction right there. She is pretty, pretty confident right now. Four straight strikes on the left lane. Mm-hmm where everybody else was having a hard time. She has killed that lane. And she had the, the only mistake was that missed 10 pin on her first shot on that lane. The lane she chose to start on, which was pretty smart. PBA Tour Finals follow us from the West Coast. You know, it would have been nice it to catch 
<laughs> she did hit it, yeah. Somebody yelled out, hit it, but it just didn't hit it hard enough. Well, in a lot of ways, it's a bit fitting that Brianna wins based on what she did here Friday. Wearing the same jersey, by the way, which she cleaned. I told her I wouldn't have cleaned it. I would have, <laughs> if I was going to wear that shirt again, I'd keep it dirty till it's over. I think I've done that before in the past. Yep. And uh, you do have a soft spot, too, for the tournament leader, especially when she's, she threw such, I mean, just awesome games and, and the series um, was phenomenal. But again, making her finish on the left lane was definitely the right thing to do. And with uh, Brianna here changing balls on that shot on the right lane, it is time for a ball change, where if she were moving on, she, you would see something different on that right lane. And uh, I believe that we have our champion. Yes. So Brianna Cote, this will be her best finish for the year. But we want to welcome to the PWBA winner's circle, Brianna Clemmer. Her first title is the 2022 PWBA St. Petersburg Clearwater Open. So, a champion for the first time. You'd never forget your first win. And Brianna Clemmer will never forget this day, capturing the title here at the PWBA St. Petersburg Clearwater Open, defeating Brianna Cote, who made a great run up the ladder. But Brianna Clemmer was just too good. Our congratulations to our champion. And Corey Krause presenting her with the trophy. I also wonder, does she get to have the hat and that little seat that goes with it, too? I think that would be a nice prize to take back to the next tournament, which happens to be in Long Island. Be sure to join us Sunday, June 12th at 5 p.m. for the PWBA BBL Classic from Maple Lanes and Rockville Center, Long Island. For my partner, Carolyn Doran Ballard and our entire CBS Sports Network crew, I'm Dave Lamont saying so long from Seminole, Florida. A tremendous final five. All of them had a win except for one. And now she has one too. Brianna Clemmer is our champion. In association with the United States Bowling Congress, this has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.